would this look like without a diode on it? Let's take away all this extra stuff to, to make things more simple to understand. And let's see. Say we just got one port. On this system. And give me a second, please. Suppose we took out um, the, high, the high voltage diode here. Suppose we took that out. Okay. Is there a problem with not having that there? In my opinion, no. The reason I say that is because this is not the uh, standard Houdini circuit. This is the force charge Houdini circuit. Standard Houdini circuit um, as this app, you know, and without that diode here, you're looking at issues because why will you have issues here without the diode? Because <clears throat> You can see this path here. Um, this is, okay. You can see this path here. You know. Which is why you need that diode there in the standard Bedini circuit. Take this channel out. It becomes the force charge circuit. And you can see now that this path is no longer there. Which means this inductor is not getting charged anymore. If that path is here, you need the diode right here to stop that from charging this inductor all the time. This is supposed to pulse. It's not still supposed to be uh, not some current charge. So this video is about can you go without a, uh, a diode here? when you're using the force charger. I say yeah because in the path that charges this inductor we have the positive going this way through this negative through the ground back up the ground and it gets blocked right here from reaching this negative. So there's no path there for charge. We've established that. Established that. <clears throat> now let's try the other way. This positive. Let's see where it goes. 
Ooh, it hits another positive. If the channel's through the battery, low voltage, slow volts, which is highly unlikely, it can go through here to ground. And yes, it can ground itself out. So the very worst that can happen here <clears throat> is this 12 volts can push through this coil and this battery and this diode and the ground to reach its negative. The worst that can happen here is you have some type of uh, priming going on here. So again, the diode here is not necessary in the force charge circuit. Let's see what happens when you pulse this coil. You give it a pulse, the gate closes. And the gate opens. Positive here. Turns into a negative right here. This negative turns into a positive. You know, negative. Oops. Um, so, and then uh, during the pulse, you know, you know, whatever, the charges, and then this uh, becomes a positive on this side. So, hallelujah, you have a positive flyback right here, high voltage. So, so it hits here, it's the plus of the battery without a diode there. Is that a big deal? I don't think so because give me a second here so just, because I don't think it's a big deal because I don't think it's a big deal that the high voltage positive hits the uh, plus of the battery. Without the diode here, I don't think that's a big deal because you have this diode on the circuit. And that kind of makes sure the battery uh, captures the pulse and it does it on the inverse end on the negative side. Now this is a, uh, a low voltage diode though. Mm -hmm. So if there's any issues without the diode here, you either put the diode back or you can add a, another channel here. Put a high voltage diode here. And leave the bottom one at, bottom one as a low voltage diode. But I don't think that's necessary because honestly, <clears throat> when it comes to blocking low voltage, and that's all you need this diode to do. And it can block the low voltage from this positive. Coming down here when the gate closes, you can block it. So why do you need this to be? Uh, uh, you can make that um, a high voltage. Uh, you can change that from a low voltage to a high voltage diode, and. Um, You know, and it will work because it'll block the uh, low voltage also. You know, the high voltage diode will. I mean, it'll still work on a, on a low voltage. 
pretty sure it'll still block slow voltage. Slow volts. I like to minimize the parts, you know, used on the circuit. So you could switch that for a, uh, a high voltage. Stuff. From a low voltage to a high voltage diode. And now, assuming the high voltage diode blocks the low voltage, which I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, I think it's the other way around, like uh, low voltage can't really block high voltage. But anyway, the low voltage from your 12 volts, you know, when the gate closes to ground, if any of that positive tries to go this way, I'm sure this high voltage diode will block it and stop you from uh, shorting this coil out. To the uh, to this battery terminals plus and minus. So I'll keep this video short. That's my opinion. Force charge circuit does not need a high voltage diode here because it already had a low voltage diode here. But if there's an issue capturing the high voltage with this low voltage diode, which there probably will be, but I don't know, maybe not, you know, because this battery might just do the job at capturing the high voltage on the positive side without this diode. Just uh, something to consider on this force charge Bedini circuit. Um, my mistake, this diode is not supposed to, when you have one coil, you don't need this. When you have one coil, you don't need that diode there. When you have many coils, if you want to do multiple coils, as the circuit was showed earlier, you need that diode. But you can leave the diode out on at least one of the coils because all the other coils will have diodes. See? You, you can, you know, take the diode out here. Because all these other uh, coils have diodes. And I don't think you need this one here. Either. Again, because these three have their own diode. These three coils are isolated from the flyback from any of the coils that get, they all going to fly back. So you don't want them flying back into each other, like, you know. You don't want them flying back into each other. Which will happen without the diodes here. At least on um, three channels, of the, or you can leave one channel with no diode. The rest have to have blocking diodes. To prevent that. So you can see this channel here has no diode at all on the positive. Uh, on the end, uh, on the finish of the drive winding here, on that point, no diodes. That's the multi coil system, and without the diode on, on this. Part. And if anybody has a reasoning for why you need this diode here, I'm open ears to that. Um, this is a uh, the other side of the circuit has a diode, so 
you're going to still have the rectification. It was a low voltage diode. I'm saying switch it to a high voltage. And, and it should block the, the low voltage plus. Uh, it gets through when the gate closes. Right here. That plus will go through this coil when the gate closes. It'll go through ground, back up ground, to find its negative. So, this diode here is uh, taking care of that issue on, on both ends. It's, it's blocking the plus here, and it's also um, rectifying the high voltage spike. It comes down this way in, in positive plus and negative. It's rectifying it not here at the, at the plus terminal. It's rectifying it here. So now where you can minimize components on the circuit. Alright, over and out, guys.